Carl in Manila in the Philippines writes to me and he says, I bought your book on Kindle and enjoyed listening to your wacky adventures on its audible version. <laughs> Thank you. Refer he's referring to my memoirs, 99% true. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and you're still talking to me. Hey, what, you know, what, what are you going to do? You sure have lived a full and exciting life. That I have. And I am so thankful for that. And thanks for being along with me on that journey. Um, my question is regarding system grounding. How does it work? Some manufacturers offer both passive and powered grounding boxes. Are they snake oil or do they have an impact on the system? Does grounding your house electrically also improve your other electronic devices that are plugged into the mains? Thanks and keep making your wonderful videos, Carl. I will do so. Well, I'm not, okay, full disclosure, I have never tried an active grounding box. There are several companies that make it and tons of audiophiles that swear by it. But I gotta draw the line somewhere. I, I really do. Uh, as an engineer, I, some of this stuff just drives me bananas and to the point where I won't even try it. And I know that's stupid. Because I, I lecture people all the time. Well, if you don't try it, how would you know? And the truth is, I have nothing. I'm guilty. Yep, I'm guilty. It just sounds so silly to me that I cannot bring myself to even try it. Now, someday, maybe I will. And I will let you know when I do. And I'll let you know the results of it. But at this point, I have not tried it, so I have no opinion other than it sounds silly to me as an engineer. Okay, so grounding is very important, completely important, and it depends a lot on the availability of the room. I mean, in our rooms upstairs, we went to the trouble of grounding them properly and isolating them completely from the main ground. And we do that through separate ground wires that go into a separate authorized ground stake into the ground. I mean, it goes, it's a copper rod. It goes down, I don't know, 10, 15 feet, whatever the code is. And it's all this copper ground stake. And it's, I mean, people go to crazy. I remember Bob Harley, uh, my buddy over at the Absolute Sound, he, when he lived in New Mexico, I remember he took me out and back and he showed me his grounding system. Wow, that was cool. So he had, outside his listening room, he had this, I don't know, it was a plot, maybe the size of this thing here. And I don't even know what he had in it, but he had that ground stake, but there was some kind of conductive slush that somehow tied it better into the ground. And I mean, he, he had measured it. I mean, Bob's quite quite a, a very thorough individual. Uh, and I was always very impressed by that. But yeah, if you can, that's a great way to have a separate ground outside where your stereo system is tied into it physically. That is great. And that's the best you can. But you know, hey, people live in apartments. I mean, you can't do that. People live in, in, in whatever. So that's not always available. So best case then is if you can, run dedicated home runs with separate AC receptacles and separate you know grounds going back to your sub to your sub panel as best you can but bottom line have as little on shared on a ground as you can and get that ground as as through a thick of wire and right into the ground as best you can and you can't do any better than that and Someday, maybe I'll try those boxes. <laughs> and I'm not going to offer an opinion until I do. Okay, all right. Well, thanks. I'll talk to you later. Bye.